This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So today I will continue my journey to turn just some dirt into one of the prettiest gemstones in existence and make an insanely useful and deadly chemical called silicon tetrachloride. If you haven't watched my previous video in this series, in which I turned dirt into pure silicon, I highly recommend you do that, since here I will be starting pretty much exactly where I left off previously. Anyway, you might ask yourself, what's the deal with silicon tetrachloride and why the hell am I making it? Because at first glance, it just looks like a random silicon containing thing. Well, I like to think of silicon tetrachloride as a gateway to hundreds of other useful silicon containing compounds, and it is also very technologically important because it allows for the purification of elemental silicon, which can quite easily be converted into it, and the resulting tetrachloride can be then distilled and turned back into silicon, greatly increasing its purity. It's then refined into these big crystal logs to use directly in the manufacture of integrated circuits such as this old laptop processor here, and it's actually really interesting to think that today I will be one step closer to making a CPU from dirt, which is what a lot of people apparently want me to do. Instead of a CPU, however, I will convert my silicon tetrachloride into something called tetraethyl orthosilicate or TEOS, which is an incredibly useful precursor to things like aerogel and artificial opals, which are the target of this whole gigantic project. Apart from having many uses, silicon tetrachloride is also a very interesting compound by itself since it's a liquid at room temperature, and if you know something about chemistry, chlorides generally tend to be solid, such as in table salt or aluminum chloride. Also, in my opinion, silicon tetrachloride is by far the most annoying chemical I have ever worked with, surpassing even bromine, and it shattered all my previous nice experiences with silicon, which was slowly becoming my favorite element until now, and you will see exactly why later. Anyway, this is one of the few projects on my channel where I can't just buy the end product directly and potentially skip all the hassle. Later, you will see why silicon tetrachloride is far from commonly available, and me making it myself is absolutely required for the next step in this chunky project. However, even though I do it, I don't want to encourage you making it yourself under any circumstances, because silicon tetrachloride is a very dangerous and deadly compound that, apart from being very volatile, can react with your eyes or lungs, covering them in some really fine sand, making you blind or unable to breathe, which is really uncool if you ask me, and that's why I needed to wear a gas mask for pretty much the entire duration of this project. Anyway, to start making my silicon tetrachloride, I first have to set up the whole apparatus, which just so happens to be the most complicated one I have ever assembled by far. However, first, I really want to tell you about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one advanced website creation platform made to allow entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Using it, you can create incredible websites, whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, and use them to sell anything from your time to regular products. Squarespace makes website creation easier than ever before. With their new Blueprint AI, you can create and quickly launch a very professional and original website, which thanks to their amazing SEO tools, shows up more often to more people growing your business the way you want it. With Squarespace's flexible payments, you can make checkouts seamless for your customers and combined with their fluid engine, make your innovative website stand out from the competition, which can grow your business better than ever before. For a free trial, go to squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash amateurchemistry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Anyway, before starting to assemble an absolute unit of an apparatus, I wanted to first weigh out and prepare all the ingredients, and since there are only three of them this time, it shouldn't be that hard. First up, I of course have my homemade silicon blobs of various sizes, I originally wanted to use most of them since I made them on such a big scale, but after running some calculations on the required amount of the other ingredient, I suffered a math-induced heart attack and settled on a one mole scale or 28 grams. Now, before weighing out the silicone, I have to pulverize it since for this specific reaction to work at a reasonable rate, the silicone has to have a really high surface area or in other words, be a fine powder. 
I decided to turn some of my smallest silicon blobs into a powder and save all the nicer ones for the future. Anyway, to pulverize the silicon, I originally wanted to use just a mortar since silicon is a rather brittle element, but for some reason it really refused to cooperate, so I had to come up with something different. I could of course just use my DIY ball mill, but since I've already used it in a few previous videos and didn't want to wait several days, I settled on this old crappy coffee grinder. I was really surprised that it still works, and to grind the silicone I got about 29 grams of blobs into it, I then sealed it up with some tape since it tends to leak a lot, and turned this thing on. After a few minutes of grinding I checked how the silicone was doing, and I wasn't too happy with the results. To try to grind the silicon better, I got all my small blobs into the mortar and again beat the hell out of them with the grinder. This time I really committed to it and you can even see how hard the silicon smashed against the metal walls of the grinder. Anyway, the powder now looked much better and I weighed 28 grams of it to use for making the silicon tetrachloride. Apart from the silicon, I am also going to need a whole bunch of the deadly chlorine gas, which was used in World War I as a gaseous poison, and unfortunately it doesn't just grow on trees, so the only way to get it is to make it myself. There are a few methods to do that, and I settled on the one involving a certain type of pool chlorine, or in other words calcium hypochlorite, and concentrated hydrochloric acid. These reagents are fortunately quite cheap and I bought a lot of them for this project but still to generate enough chlorine to react with all my silicon, I will need about 150 grams of calcium hypochlorite and nearly half a liter of 30% hydrochloric acid. They make the chlorine when combined together and it's quite scary to see even a little of this dangerous green gas while I will need to make almost 150 grams. The sheer dangers of this project prevented me from doing it for a very long time and I was gathering the courage and safety equipment for ages, so I was really excited to finally do it. To start I assembled together a copious amount of glassware and it took me about an hour to put together this monstrosity of a setup. It barely fits in my largest fume hood and consists of four subunits, each required for everything to work, the first one being the chlorine generation and drying station, which will slowly combine calcium hypochlorite with hydrochloric acid to release some wet chlorine which will then get dried in this wash bottle, filled with concentrated sulfuric acid. The dry chlorine can then travel up to the heart of this thing, where in a glass tube filled with silicon, it will react to form silicon tetrachloride as a vapor. This vapor will then be able to condense in this ice-cooled condenser and travel down into a collection flask connected to a gas trap filled with a sodium hydroxide solution, which should neutralize any stray chlorine or silicon tetrachloride. This whole setup is really complicated and quite sketchy in some places where I didn't have enough glassware or accidentally broke some, Anyway, with everything now ready, I could start the reaction and to do that I first lightly opened my funnel's valve to slowly drip in hydrochloric acid onto the calcium hypochlorite. The reaction going on here uses the oxidizing power of the hypochlorite ion to produce chlorine gas which escapes further into the apparatus as well as water and calcium chloride, both of which stay in the flask. The chlorine output of this reaction is quite poor since a third of it remains bonded to the calcium and to generate a reasonable amount I had to swap out the contents of the flask a few times to make space for more hypochlorite. Anyway, I continued producing the chlorine for a few minutes so that it displaced all the air inside the apparatus because if there was some present, it could easily kill the silicon tetrachloride producing reaction. When the inside of the apparatus got a light green tinge, I was now ready to start making the silicon tetrachloride. To initiate the reaction I had to heat the silicon containing tube using a blowtorch, since below around 600 degrees celsius pretty much nothing happens. After a few minutes of blasting the tube with the blowtorch, suddenly a lot of this white mist started to rise from it, and this was my precious silicon tetrachloride in its vapor form. The reaction going on here is just a simple fusion of silicon and chlorine, and apart from some external heating, it doesn't need much to keep going. Anyway, the vapors had quite a hard time condensing and a lot of them escaped into the trap, which started getting covered in silicon dioxide made by the reaction of silicon tetrachloride with water. 
A lot of this nasty yellow powder also started to appear in the apparatus, and at first I wasn't really sure what that was, but then I remembered that there was still quite a bit of aluminum in my silicone from the fermite reaction in the last video, which upon contact with chlorine forms aluminum chloride as this yellow mist. After about 10 minutes of heating the silicone, I started to see a tiny amount of an orange liquid accumulating near the collection flask which told me that the process was working, but just from the look of the trap I was sure that I was going to lose a ton of my product due to it being surprisingly volatile and hard to condense. Also, quite an interesting detail is that some of the silicone started to glow red on its own from the reaction with chlorine, but I still helped it using my blowtorch to ensure a more complete reaction. At some point, I also submerged the receiving flask in an ice bath to help the tetrachloride stay a liquid, since so much vapor escaped into the trap and my fume hood that I was afraid I wasn't condensing anything. This whole system was quite tricky to run and looked like a textbook evil scientist creation with some funky bubbling gas, flames and white vapors. I left everything to run until I ran out of calcium hypochlorite and when the chlorine generation came to a halt, I removed the blowtorch from under the now partially melted reaction tube and left everything to calm down a little. I then started to slowly disassemble the whole apparatus which kept me occupied to the point where I didn't notice the pressure inside the apparatus slowly drop and suck in the water from the trap. Once I saw that it was a little too late and a bit of water got into the receiving flask containing my precious product, destroying most of it which made me pretty darn angry. I didn't record the exact moment when this disaster happened, but you can see that there is now quite a bit of the silicon dioxide paste in the flask, and since this is pretty much just ultra fine sand, I have officially found the most labor intensive way to make it. Anyway, upon disassembling the apparatus further, a big cloud of silicon dioxide smoke appeared because a lot of the tetra chloride was now escaping into my fume food, to prevent any more from doing so, I quickly drained all my product from the improvised joint into the flask and sealed it up with a glass stopper and a plastic clip. Despite my attempts to tame this beast of a liquid, a lot of it still escaped from the sealed flask and magically made the plastic clip snap in half and just kinda fall off. To try to prevent that, I used some of my vacuum grease and another clip to seal it for good, which seemed to do the job. The keyword here being seemed, since just after a while, right when I turned off my camera, the double sealed stopper decided to shoot up from the flask like a bullet, leaving behind an enormous cloud of deadly silicon tetrachloride vapors, which made me just stand there and wonder what the hell happened. The flask actually did this one more time, again off camera, and ate like three more of my clips, resulting in me getting really angry at this chemical. Not only did I spend a whole day making it, but I also got a shit healed and destroyed half of my product, have to clean up for like another whole day, and now this incredibly deadly chemical just says no to staying in the flask. I was getting really freaking angry, but had no time to think since with each passing minute my crappy yield got ejected into the atmosphere and I had to do something to tame this hell of a chemical. I decided to put it into my freezer in a way that it just physically cannot shoot out the stopper again, which together with the cold temperature should calm it down at least a little. I had no guarantee that this weak storage technique will work, so I just prayed to the chemistry gods and now with my product somewhat secure, I had to take care of the other mess which was my apparatus. It looked well bad, with dirty glassware laying all over my fume hood and paired with this weird smoking condenser, this whole setting looked just like a typical chemistry moment. I started to slowly take everything apart and figured out that the smoking stuff was actually the previously created aluminum chloride which got everywhere and was a pain to clean. Another fun thing was that my gas trap was now covered in a thick layer of silicon dioxide, which I had to soak in a sodium hydroxide solution for days to even think about it coming off. All my gas tubes also suffered a ton of damage from the copious amounts of chlorine, and I spent nearly two days just cleaning everything up. When I was done, it was now time to get my product out of the freezer, and it was honestly pretty likely that it had all just evaporated. It felt like it was and wasn't there at the same time, and I mentally prepared myself that all this work was for nothing. 
To my surprise, my genius storage method had done its job because it looked like everything was still there. Now, when I take the flask out of this carefully controlled environment, all my product will evaporate in no time, so I decided to prepare everything I need to store it in advance. I wanted to get it into a vial so that I can easily use it later, However, it would of course escape out of any ordinary vial, so to try to tame it, I got some Teflon tape and wrapped it around the thread of the vial like 50 times. I also weighed the vial in advance so that I can later easily figure out my yield. Now I had to think of something to filter my product with, since it had a ton of silicon dioxide floating around in it. I settled on this beautiful improvised pipette filter, which should be the best thing for this job, and when everything was ready, it was time to take out the nastiest liquid in existence out of my freezer. It fortunately didn't shoot me in the face with the stopper, and quickly after taking it out, I scraped the flask of any eyes and opened it. I was of course greeted by a nasty cloud of vapors, and I could now begin the tiny scale filtration. Everything went surprisingly smoothly, given the fact that I could easily push the liquid through the cotton filter since it was inside a pipette, and after a few minutes I got all the tetrachloride into the vial. I then quickly screwed on the lid and finally had some time to look at what I've made. I actually got much more product than expected considering the water incident. My silicon tetrachloride ended up being this bright lime green liquid because of a lot of dissolved chlorine which increased its spiciness to another level. It was also a little cloudy due to some residual water contamination, but that won't be too much of an issue. When it comes to the yield, I managed to make exactly 15 grams of some rather pure silicon tetrachloride, which is a grand 9% yield from the starting silicon. As expected, the yield is incredibly crappy, but that's because a ton of my product didn't condense and escaped to my fume hood as well as most of the starting silicon didn't even react. I originally wanted to show you some experiments with my product, but I got nowhere near the 80-ish grams of yield I hoped for, so I can only show you silicon tetrachlorides, air and water hydrolysis to extra pure silicon dioxide. As I said earlier, I plan to use my product to make tetraethyl orphosilicate and then some synthetic opals in my next video of this series, However, before doing that, I will probably run this whole process for a second time to get some more of the product since 15 grams is way too little to work with. Anyway, this whole project has been a wild ride with me originally thinking that my lovely element silicone won't betray me to later get completely obliterated by that little prick and this has been by far the most annoying and difficult project in terms of a single chemical reaction on my channel so far. I hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did and want to support insane projects like this you can like it, subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend. If you want to see some extra content unsuitable for YouTube like my mercury distillation video and have your name displayed at the end of every video, I invite you to join my Patreon. Also, as always, I have to give a big thank you to every one of my lovely Patreon members for their support in making projects like this possible and see you guys in the next video.